morning. Day 207. Cooking down the freezer, refrigerator, and working pantry meals. So last night it rained and it's cool out. Feels really nice. I went and checked my food forest out and of course it's gotten humongous again. All that nitrogen in, in the rain. There's nothing like it. So anyway, I dried some more mint. So I'm trying to keep it trimmed. I'm not real good at doing that. I just like to let it grow and grow and grow. But I want to store up on some mint tea for winter. Did you know you could get reusable tea bags? that you can use over again. You can put whatever tea in them you want and then you can reuse them. I have one somewhere and I want to try and use those this winter. Now I have to be careful with mint because um, if you have conditions like esophagitis and things like that, mint can irritate your esophagus. I don't know if you know that or not. But, uh, so I have to be careful with mint, but every now and then I enjoy a cup of mint tea. So, I don't know if I'm going to the boat today because it's very cloudy, it's cooler, and usually we sit around outside when we're at the boat. Which can get a little boring if you have to stay in the cabin. So, I don't know. I may just stay home today. We'll have to wait and see. And I have no idea what I'm making for breakfast. Of course, if I go to the boat, I won't be making dinner here today. But we'll have to wait and see. See what the day brings. I like days where I don't have a lot of plans, where I just go through the day doing what I feel I need to do. I like it better when I go through the day when doing what I want to do, but sometimes there's lots of things that need to be done. So that's the route we go. But anyway, um, so I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see what's for breakfast today. Lots of choices out there. I do have some greens that I need to cook before they go bad which even if I go to the boat, I'll probably do that. All right, well, I will be back in a little bit, and we'll see what's for breakfast, day 207. What a refreshing morning. Beautiful. The air is so clean. Let's take a look at my food forest tomatoes yet. Can you see the spider web with the water? I'm going to try and save these seeds. We'll see. There's a few. A few seed pods. Maybe I can grow my own sun patients. Let's just take a quick look in the garden. Oh yes, this is the soil I bought, the potting mix. I didn't get around to opening it, I was too tired yesterday. But the garden is just doing beautifully. It's turned into a forest. All right. I'm very happy. Very, very happy. There's my Meyer lemon. I hope I can keep it alive this year. I keep trying. My kohlrabi is getting stronger, but no bulbs. I'm going to leave it and see what happens. 
I have tons of pak choy seeds now. I think I need to start harvesting those. And look at my chard again, it's huge. I think I see a female flower on my zucchini. Let's see. Oh, I can't get it on camera. There she is. Uh, <laughs> nope, can't get it. There she is, right there. Oh, I'm so excited. I hope somebody fertilized her, but it looks like she's just going to start opening, so I guess I'll have to do that job. All right, I have more seeds over here. I need to get those before they fall off. And my mystery plant over here, which is either a squash or a pumpkin, do any of you know? Never grown a pumpkin. And my beans are starting to get lots of flowers. I need to plant another, another succession of beans. Okay. I have my work cut out for me today. I need to fertilize my, if she opens today or tomorrow. I still don't have a lot of pollinators, but we'll see. All right, there is my beautiful food forest. Good morning everybody, cheers. So I'm sitting here drinking my coffee because this is what I like to do in the morning and it's cloudy and now it's sunny so I think it's just going to be a cloudy day. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what I got uh, from Amazon and this is actually a used book that they said was in very good condition and this book is like absolutely brand new. Um, the original cost was hmm, see it here. Well, anyway, I paid I paid $10.77 and it was free shipping. So, over the years I've been gathering books on uh, medicinal plants, foraging plants, um, and I thought how to do repairs, things like that. And I thought this would be a great addition to my library. Now this one is written by um, Rita Bingham, who is the daughter of Esther Dickey, who wrote the original Passport to Survival. Now the original book that Esther wrote, um, she goes and talks about all different kinds of survival. And stocking up and what to stock up. Um, now the original book, which you can still get, is um, she said that an emergency diet you could store four basic foods. Wheat, powdered milk, honey, and salt. So now her daughter expanded on that and I think there's seven foods to store. Um, and some of the emergencies that she talks about are loss of income or the family wage earner, unexpected medical expenses, natural or man-made disasters, interrupted food supplies, water shortages or contamination, power outages, and who knows what else. Does any of that sound familiar? It does to me. So anyway, um, I think this is going to be a really good book. I haven't read it yet. I've just glanced through it. But some of the things that she talks about, 
Uh, she has a 12-step program in here. Um, how to afford and maintain a year's supply of food. Building your how-to library. Uh, as I mentioned, some of the books that I have. What, why, and where, and how to store. Water, how much to store and how to treat it. Food, what does your body really need. Food preparation equipment, what to use and how. The switch to whole foods, everyday recipes. We all could use that, right? Uh, keeping clean, sanitation and miscellaneous supplies. Energy, lights, keeping warm or cool. Emergency doctrine, home health care. Uh, growing, sprouting, and harvesting, and energy plans, and 72-hour kits. So I think this is going to be a really interesting book. It's not very fat. It has, uh, let's see, 234, yeah, 234 pages. And it has a list on the back with a grocery shopping list. I can't show too much of this book. I don't want to infringe on um, copyright. But anyway, um, I'm going to read this book and I'll let you know eventually when I get it done. Sometimes I read a book for a while, then I read another book for a while, then I go back. I go back and forth. I don't really, I, I rarely read a book from cover to cover. But who knows, it might happen. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that um, and maybe to think about getting a couple of really good books. Um, you could always go to the library and borrow books and just, you know, copy what you need. If you have a cell phone, you can take pictures of the pages that uh, you find are interesting to you and store it that way. You can transfer it over to your computer and then you could always print it off. Just a thought. So, um, yesterday I did stop at Ollie's after uh, I got my uh, dirt and I bought another big thing of coffee and that's gone up. That was $19 and something and this time it was $21 but um, I've used a lot of the last one that I bought. And somehow I've kind of, since I got this new little coffee maker, I've kind of fallen away from using the, um, um, the coffee I have. I've been kind of saving that for iced coffee. And I'm going to put those grounds either in my worm bin, because they like coffee, or on my hydrangeas to turn them a bluish purple. So I forgot to mention at Home Depot when I was there um, they had a really sad assortment of tomatoes and peppers. <laughs> they all really needed a home. They should have been marked like at least half price. Expensive, oh my goodness, that was just ridiculous. So I'll be going and starting seeds again um, and saving seeds because even seeds are getting expensive. So like I, I've always said, we have to keep one step ahead of these people. Otherwise, you know, they're going to have all our money and we're going to have nothing. And I mean literally nothing. So, but while I was there, their shrubs, which aren't important to survival, but you know, if you're like me and you love a beautiful garden, I mean, to me, a beautiful garden speaks to my soul. It, for me, it's mental health. You know, I really enjoy my garden that much. So I'm getting off the beaten path here. So they had um, hydrangeas, small, in a small thing. They're about this big. And a beautiful, beautiful purple color. So they were originally $20.00 and they were half off so they were ten dollars and I bought two of them because for the last couple years my knockout roses that I have in my front yard 
I think they have rose mosaic and they'll, they'll come back and they'll have lots of leaves and then all the leaves kind of turn a transparent um, color and they kind of die off and then they get new growth but hardly any flowers. So I think I have three of those and I think I'm going to pull those out because they really look ugly and I'm going to plant those two hydrangeas there. So I thought that was a really, really good deal. So I did pick those up. And hopefully I won't need any more uh, potting mix. Um, I bought one of those big bags for each of my containers. So I want to grow my fall garden in there now and see what happens. I'm learning. I am by no means an expert uh, gardener. You know, I've been growing gardens for years and a lot of them have been, eh, mediocre to say the least. This year is the nicest that I've had because I moved the garden to a sunnier location. So if you're trying to garden in the shade, uh, don't be frustrated. There's a list of flower or plants that you can grow in the shade, but um, it's made a world of difference um, in my garden this year. So anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about that book. Oh, and when I did go to Ollie's, remember I was talking about the bacon bits? Well, they had them again, so I picked those up. And these were $3.79 this time. I think they were $3.49 the last time I bought them. So um, I did get those. So try going to Ollie's. Um, they have canned goods. They have um, spices. They have... It, it's a small section. It's not like a big grocery store. But it's probably comparable to Dollar Tree. And some of the things you can get there are um, a little bit higher end, for lack of a better term, um, and they're reduced at a good price. And, um, you know, you don't have to pay $1.25 for a can of beets. So, uh, if you have an Ollie's in your area, check that out. Uh, same with Big Lots. Big Lots has a section of food and groceries, and I've gotten a lot of, like, smoked salts and, you know, different things at Big, uh, Big Lots, too. So, okay, um, I'll be back with breakfast in a little bit once I figure out what I'm going to have. All right, I'm ready to make a little pot pie. <clears throat> And I just got my celery out. And it's growing in the refrigerator. <laughs> it's even getting little roots on the stem. So I'm going to cut this off here and I'm going to stick that in the garden. But all this is new growth. Nature finds a way. And this guy is going to go into the garden. So in the meantime, I have chopped up carrots, onions, and potatoes. I'm going to steam those along with some celery and then I'm going to make a roux with some white sauce and that's going to be going into my pot pie that I'm going to have for dinner. Okay, I have everything in my microwave steamer. I have a little water in here and I'm going to Season this with some salt and pepper. A little bit more salt. Okay, and then I'm going to put some onion powder. Some garlic powder. Some more herbs de Provence. This doesn't come. 
come out of here very well, but good enough. Now when these are done cooking, I'm going to add some of these peas in the dented can. All right, I'm going to mix this up and steam it for about five minutes. All right, I'll be back. Okay, my veggies are cooked. I have these uh, chicken tender things from corn that I have left over. I want to use those. And it's these. They're pretty good, but I want to make some more because that's not quite enough for my pie. So I also want to make enough for a chicken sandwich. So I think I'm going to make the rest of these. Some of them have some ice on it, so I'm just going to rinse that off. The taste is still perfectly fine. But there's another thing gone from my freezer. All right, I'll be back in a second. Okay, um, I have my little chicken cubes. I have them in some water, and I'm going to add some of the vegan chickenless seasoning. Like I said before, be careful, this is very salty. And I'm just going to cook these in the microwave. That's good enough for now. I'll taste it when they're done. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the herbs de Provence. Because that's a good flavor for a chicken pie. And I'm only going to cook these for a few minutes because they're going to be going into my pie with my veggies. So let me taste this broth. I could use a little more. I don't want to oversalt it, but I'm also going to be adding some milk to it later, so because I'm going to use this broth. This and the broth from the veggies that I steamed to make my sauce. All right, cover this up and I'll be back. Okay, I have my vegetables and my nut chicken in here. I'm going to add some of these peas. And it's perfectly okay if I get a little pea juice in there. Add however many you like. So that's enough for me. Maybe a couple more. All right. That looks good. So I'm going to set this aside and then you can always make something else with the peas, peas and carrots. You can make uh, pea soup. Lots of different things. Okay. So I'm going to set this aside and then I'm going to make a roux. Okay, I'm going to add the liquid from my veggie steaming right to the not chicken steaming, and I put the same spices in here as I did in here. So that's going to be the basics of my gravy for my pie. And then I'm also going to add some of this hazelnut milk, whatever milk you like, nut milk, regular milk. That is totally up to you because it's your food. Right, in this pot I have some, actually it's a combination of vegan butter and a little bit of butter I had left. I'm not that picky about the dairy. Um, so I'm going to add some flour to this, and this is just regular old flour. Now there's two ways that you can thicken gravies. You can use cornstarch, or you can use flour. 
And today I'm going to use flour and about, no, oh, these are, I think, he, like heaping teaspoons. So there's probably a couple tablespoons in there of flour. And you want to cook the flour for a little bit. Now it's going to clump up and you want to cook it on low. But this is what's going to thicken thicken your um, gravy. That actually looks like it could use some more. And it'll start like balling up like this and that's fine. You want to cook it for a couple of minutes. Now I have mine on low. And you want to cook it to get that flour taste out. So I'm going to cook this a couple minutes. Uh, some people like to brown it a little bit, which is fine, but that's not necessary. So this doesn't take too long at all. Just a minute or two. And I'm cooking this, it's like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, if I wait until 5 o'clock to cook this, I, I'll never get it cooked. So, okay, I'm going to add my, my broth to it, a little at a time, because you don't want lumps. You add a little bit, and then you stir it until it's smooth, and you continue to do that, because uh, this will thicken up again. You just continue to do that until it doesn't lump up. And you can always add some extra milk or extra water if you put too much flour in. But making a roux is pretty simple. It's just butter and flour or some kind of fat. Some people use bacon fat or lard or uh, whatever fat you like. And then um, just thickening it up. All right. I'm going to keep stirring and cooking, and the gravy will get thicker as it as it cooks. And it's all preference in how thick you like it. Now I think I may have to add some water to this. And you can go back and forth and add water or milk or whatever it is that you prefer. So I'm going to add the rest now. And I'm going to use this little dish to make my pie because I want a little pie. I don't want a big pie. Now you may need to add some seasonings to this at the end, depending on how salty you like it. So you may need to add a little bit more salt and pepper. So I'm going to let this cook a minute and then I'm going to add some milk. And I'm also going to add a little bit of nutmeg. You don't have to add nutmeg if you don't like it. I know some people don't like it. So I'm going to add about, oh, an eighth of a teaspoon maybe of nutmeg. Add as much as you like. But I, I do like nutmeg in cream style gravies. Alright, I'm going to let this cook for a minute before I add my milk. Okay, this is thickened up nicely. Now if you want, you can use this just as a chicken gravy, which would be delic delicious. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit of this milk 
this is the consistency. It's a little too thick for me, so but I don't want it thin because I don't want it to soak into my pie crust too much. So I'm going to cook this a little longer and give it a taste along the way. Make sure it's got enough seasonings for you because you can always add more seasonings. You can't take them away once they're in there. Now as this cools, this will thicken up too. So a little tiny bit more milk and then I'm going to let it cook for a minute and then that's going to be that. All right. I'll be back in a little bit and I'll get my pie crust and add my filling. And then I'm going to put that in the fridge for a while because it's way too early for dinner. Like I said, it's about 1.30. So you can make any cream sauce this way. And it's easy. And it spikes up your meals a little bit. Alright, I'll be back later. Alright, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but you want to keep stirring this the whole time you're cooking it. So this is done now. Here's my veggies and my not chicken. And this will probably be a little too much for my pie, but I can always eat it with a, a potato or rice or something else. Okay, I'm going to add this to my veggies. Another thing that would be good is if you cook this with some biscuits on top, that would be tasty. That way you wouldn't have to make it into a pie. But I have the pie crust and I wanted to make a pie. So there we have it. And like I said, this is probably going to be too much for my pie. So I may just do the biscuit thing for another meal. All right, I'm going to give this a taste. Let's see. Let's see if we did a good job. Very hot. I'm going to try a piece of chicken. Not chicken. Looks like Popeye filling to me. Okay. Let's see. Hopefully I don't burn my mouth. Mmm. That's really good. All right, time to assemble the pie. All right, I have this pie crust that I got out of, out of the refrigerator uh, that I got at Walmart the last time I went there, which was quite a while ago. Uh, I think I did a haul about that. So that's what I'm using today. I'm not making it from scratch. And it's just the Great Value brand. It's cheaper than the Pillsbury. Okay, I have my pie crust here. I have my little dish, which is not a pie plate, but it's good enough. And I'm just going to put this on top of here and try and fit it in there. And I hope I only need one pie crust, but it doesn't matter. I have another one, but I'm just going to do it this way. And I am not a pie maker. I'll tell you what, when it comes to baking and I can bake the basics, but I'm not really a baker. So I'm going to cut this off and leave a little bit of a rim so that I can 
pinch it with the top. So I'm just going to cut this off and I'll be back. Okay, I have enough left for the pie crust for the top. It's not beautiful, but it's good. I just cut off what was too much and that's what this is. And I'm just going to roll this out into a circle and I hope that I have enough. And I don't want to dig out my rolling pin, so I'm just using a bottle. Oh, I still have ants. I cannot get rid of them. I sprayed outside. I have ant traps. I have everything known to man, and these little suckers just keep on coming. So I just don't leave food on this counter. They don't go anywhere else. They just seem to like it right here. All right. So I'm just going to roll this out until I can get it to fit, hopefully. And you want to do that before it gets too warm or you're going to have a sticky mess. All right, I'll be back when I get this done. Okay, that's about as thin as it's going to go. So I'm going to have to put some of this over the top. And I'm just going to fill up my little pie dish here with all this yumminess. And this is probably enough for two meals because it's a filling meal. So who says you can't have chicken pot pie if you're vegetarian? Of course you can. You can veganize or veg vegetize almost any meal with plant-based ingredients. Alright, I don't want to overfill this because I don't want it to boil over. So I think that'll be good. And this is enough for another meal. Okay, now normally my pie crust would be bigger for the top, but it's not, so I'm just going to lay that on top and I'm going to fold this part over over the crust and that's how I'm going to seal it. So I think that'll be fine and if it boils over in a couple places I'm just going to put a, um, a piece of foil or something underneath but I think this will be okay. So I'm not going to the boat today. Um, it would be boring up there. The weather's kind of iffy. So I'm staying home this weekend and just enjoying my home. Alright, now you can make it a little fancy if you want with your knuckles and your fingers. Like I said, I am not a baker, but I do know a couple basic things about baking. And it's not my first rodeo of baking, but I enjoy cooking much better than baking. So we have to go with what we like, right? I think so. All right, looks pretty good, and I'm just going to make some slits up on top to let the steam out. You can make fancy slits if you want, but I'm not going to bother with that. So there we go, our little pot pie 
and I'll show you that once I get it all baked up and give it a taste. All right, I'll be back later. But first, I need to get some breakfast. It's already 2 o'clock and I haven't had any brunch yet. I just haven't been hungry. All right, so I will be back with that before I well, come back. I ended back up with not that. eating any breakfast or brunch today. I just wasn't hungry. It was one of those days. But I did finish my pot pie. Look at that beauty. So now I'm going to give it a taste. And hopefully it's good. My biggest concern was at what temperature to bake it and for how long. So I'm hoping this did it. Now, from the beginning, I covered the crust with foil. And then towards the end, this was getting kind of brown. I covered that with foil, too. So let's see if it's done and let's see if it's tasty. Okay, so I probably won't eat the whole pie. I don't know. So I'm going to try and cut it in half. And then I'll cut it in quarters and we'll give it a try. I've never been really good at getting pies out of pie pans. I usually make a mess. But hope springs eternal, so let's give it a shot. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> well, the bottom fell out, but that's okay. We'll just scoop it up. It seems like it's done. Still hot. Okay, well here's what it looks like. It looks good. Let's give it a taste. Still hot. Here we go. I hope it's done. Still seems really hot. And this will probably be enough for two meals anyway, even though it's a small pie. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. That is really good. It's done. Try another bite. The crust is done. It isn't soggy. What I did when I baked it, like I said, I covered the crust part with foil. Initially, I baked it at 400 for about 20 minutes. Then when I saw the top was getting brown, I turned it down to 375. And the last five minutes, I cooked it at 350. So this is perfect. I wouldn't change a thing. And the spices are great. 
The flavor is really good. I think you could fool somebody with this and say it's a chicken pot pie. Mm hmm So, give this a try. You can make it with chicken or turkey or beef. Plant-based meats. <clears throat> you could make it with now... It did a real good job with the corn that I had, and I would buy that again. I'm going to see how it works in a chicken salad probably tomorrow. You could use um, textured vegetable protein nuggets. They have those little nuggets. You could use um, the, the soybeans. I uh, can't remember the name of them now. Oh, butler soy curls. You could use those. So I'm going to eat my dinner because now I'm hungry. And I'll probably eat the other quarter of this and save the rest for another meal. So, all right, my friends, I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Don't be afraid of trying new things, new recipes new adventures, whatever you're into, new new hobbies. All right, my friends. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.